Hey everyone, today I'm going to talk about our snapshot for uh, clinical integration to GHO. So if you haven't signed up for the integration, super easy, just to go to clinicalconnect.com, uh, sign up for a free account. Once you sign up, you will see this uh, integration page. All you need to do is you click on add a clinical connection and you just follow these videos for each one of these and you add these three things and you're good to go your integration is going to start running now once you do that uh we've got a bunch of uh automation out of the box that you can grab if you want to to just kind of show you type of uh, automations that you can do so let's just start from the beginning so we got the typical appointment reminder so if you click on this I'm just going to go through this one by one. So this is going to take a little bit of uh, time, but I uh, just want to make sure that everyone understand how uh, things work. So the appointment reminder, the way that it works, we have a trigger on upcoming appointment reminder start time. So this is basically a reminder start time that the platforms, the integration uh, sent back to GHL, which allows you to set up your reminders, which we are doing in here. So if this has changed, and then we're going to check that, make sure that the upcoming appointment is actually within the next uh, seven days. So as you can see, upcoming appointment start time is in the next seven days. So they have a future appointment. Uh, that's where we're going to start the uh, reminder. So we're going to set the uh, event start time to be the reminder start time. And we're going to do a 24 hours, one day before. You can change this to do two days before as well. doesn't matter. You can play with it however you want. The most important part is from the first condition till here. The rest is basically if you want to do 24 hours, one hour reminder and those kind of things. So you basically build this up. And the last thing that you want that we want to do is we want to make sure that we close off the automation with a one day wait. And the reason for that is because sometimes when we push updates from uh, GHL, sorry, from clinical to GHL uh, via API, this will get uh, triggered every single time. So we want to make sure that we're not gonna hammer this. So just make sure that you put uh, a one day at the end and you should be good to go. So that's the appointment reminder. Now let's go to the next one. So next one we got like cancellation and follow up. So this is if someone canceled the last appointment and you want to follow up. Uh, similarly, we got contact change trigger again. Um, you can either leave this empty or you can have it as a last appointment. Oops, last appointment canceled at has changed. And we're gonna basically what we're gonna do. We're gonna make sure that the last appointment cancel at was today or yesterday and then this is optional so what i'm doing in here i'm also making sure that they don't have any upcoming appointments so maybe they cancel and right after they book a new appointment in the future so you probably don't want to send reminders for them but this is again optional so i'm making sure that they don't have any upcoming appointment and just to be clean uh because the way that these dates work uh, it only gives you the day. So let's say if uh, today right now it's let's say 11 a.m. If their appointment is actually on like 12 a.m. today, this will still get triggered because it is today. It's not going to look at the actual uh, hour or time. It only looks at the date. So that's why it's always safe to put one day. So make sure that, okay, one day is passed and then send your follow-up. And as usual, you want to close it off with another one day wait. Okay. So that's canceled follow up. The next one that we have is clinical appointments that we want to book them inside the GHL calendar. So this is again not necessary, but some of you might want to do this again because we are getting the first upcoming appointment you can book that within the ghl calendar so this is going to be very simple so the contact change is again upcoming appointment start time and all you need to do is choose the trigger event uh, action which is the book appointment you choose your calendar 
And in here, usually when it comes, it has the typical date. What you want to do, you want to click on this and choose dynamic and then search for this upcoming appointment reminder start time. It's in a specific format like this that will allow booking within the GHL calendar. So this is another one that if you guys want to do, uh, you can have. And then next one, we have did not arrive follow up, very similar to cancellation. So again, this one would be, again, contact change. You can put it as if the last appointment did not arrive, has changed. You put a condition and make sure that the last appointment did not arrive. This is how a clinical send it back as a yes, if they didn't arrive. So we just make sure that if for some reason they change their API and they do lowercase or uppercase. We want to have both of them. So if they did not arrive, and again, I'm doing, if they don't have any upcoming appointments, then I'm going to start sending the reminders. And also I'm doing a safety in here as well, because sometimes when we nullify a custom field, it won't get updated in GHL. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure even if I nullify it and it doesn't get updated, I'll just sign number one to last appointment did not arrive so uh, next time that it comes in here it will not get triggered in here and then i'm gonna wait one day and that will do the job did not arrive and then a bunch of other things so for example if it's the first appointment and you want to ask review so it's very simple you click on this and you go into contact change if the total number of their appointments has changed, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check that they only have one appointment and I want to, because I'm sending, asking for review, I want to make sure that they've already been to the practice. So if the last appointment was today or yesterday, and also the last appointment they didn't cancel or it's not empty. So all the safety checks in here. And as usual, you want to wait one day because again, the, we are only looking at the date. GHL doesn't work with the start time. So we make sure that we wait one day and then we follow up. And as usual, you want to close it off with uh, another delay in here. So that's first appointment asking for review. The logic for first appointment follow-up is exactly the same. It's just your messaging. So I'm not going to go through that. It's exactly the same logic. Now the other one, GHL calendar to clinical. So this is uh an extra setup fee if you guys want this specific one because we need to do uh something manually for every account that want this ghl calendar to clinical so this is basically helping with like let's say if you have ai automation or something that you're using ghl calendar and you want that appointment that you book on ghl calendar automatically goes into clinical calendar this does it for you uh pretty simple uh once you uh set up so if you need this, just uh, message me and we can uh, set it up for you. So basically when someone book an appointment in a specific calendar, so you choose the calendar, for example, and then we just basically give you this webhook and these are the options that you need to fill out. So business name, you just put the location name, staff member, you just put their name as it comes in the, uh, uh, what you call it in their uh, setup. We also have a separate video for this, how to set it up as well. And then appointment type name, category, and duration. I'm not going to go through every single one of these. Uh, we have a video on YouTube on how to how this works. Uh, if you want, I can send you that video separately as well. So this is for GHL calendar going to clinical. Next up, we got uh, reactivation. So if I click on this, you can play with reactivation in too many different uh, ways. So this is basically um, doing uh, a trigger on last appointment start time has changed. And then what I'm doing is I'm looking for anyone that their appointment was exactly four months ago. So as you can see, I'm looking at if their last appointment was in the last four months and it wasn't in the last three months. So it means that it was actually happened last uh, four months ago. So I'm doing this. And then I'm also, if that's true, I'm also checking that they don't have any upcoming appointments. And if that's true, then I'm going to do my reactivation. 
if any of those fails, what I'm going to do, I'm waiting seven days and then I'll check again. So this makes sure that let's say if someone, their last appointment was two months ago, they're not just going to be ignored. They're going to be in this loop until it becomes four months and then we're going to hit them with the uh, reactivation. Now, I put this note in here for those of you that want a little bit more uh, logic around your reactivation. So what you can do, you can also add a tag and also a timestamp. So let's say I did reactivation for this contact. I can add a timestamp that says, hey, we did reactivate this patient uh, today, April 2nd. So next time that we want to reactivate, we want to make sure that, hey, it has been like six months after the first reactivation and they haven't been still to the practice, then we want to reactivate. So this is going to make it a little bit more complex, but you also have that uh, kind of like functionality as well if you want to do it. That's why I put this note in here. Uh, let's go to the next one. So next one, we got the, so this is these two, just to kind of show you how you can do treatment-based follow-ups or welcome notes or practitioner-based follow-up welcome notes. You can do the exact same thing for location. So if you have different business location, clinic locations, you can do follow-ups based on the location uh, name as well because we get the business uh, location name coming as a custom field. But let's do the treatment-based. Uh, so you guys kind of have a feeling of how it works. So if a contact change again, I'm looking at the last appointment type. That's where the treatment comes. And the condition is again. So I'm just checking for the name. So if the last appointment was, let's say, A, if the last appointment was B, if the last appointment was C. So you kind of get a feeling of that. You just need to fill this up. And then you do your follow-ups based on those uh, branches. Exactly similar for the practitioners. So if you go to practitioners, best welcome. Uh, we're doing the contact change, last appointment type. Uh, or you can do the contact change for last practitioner name if you want to, if that's changed. I would do it with the other one. Uh, making sure. So this is because I'm doing welcome. What I've added is like, hey, I want to make sure that this is the first appointment. Okay. And once that is true, then I'm going to come in here and say, hey, okay, if the practitioner, last appointment practitioner name is A, do this. If it's B, do that. If it's C, do that. So you basically have these and you just do the follow-ups. Very, very simple, okay? And last but not least, for those of you that are doing the appointment reminder, you want to kind of put a safety check for upcoming appointment if they get canceled. So let's say if someone uh, if someone gets into this appointment reminder sequence, and uh, let's say they are in here, they are waiting for, let's say the 24 hours one. If they call the practice and cancel, we need to have an automation to remove them from this. So otherwise they will start getting the, uh, uh, what you call it, the reminder. So that's what this is for. So this one is basically looking at any contact changes. And then it basically looks at if their upcoming appointment uh, canceled at, if it shows for some reason, sometimes it doesn't show. Let me just hover here. Very bad. Upcoming appointment canceled at today or upcoming appointment is yesterday or if you don't get any of those and the upcoming appointment is just zero, it means that, okay, we've got to remove them from there. They don't have any upcoming appointment. They cancel or the, whatever. We want to remove them from the appointment reminder. So super, super important. And again, I'm missing a wait in here. It's always good to keep at least one day wait in here. So this doesn't get hammered. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'm going to, if you're watching this on Facebook uh, group that we have, I'm going to put the link for the snapshot in the Facebook group. If you're on YouTube, just uh, reach out. I'll send send the snapshot over, reach out to my email, or just find us on Facebook, uh, the Clinical Integration Group. And um, yeah, uh, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.